what's right if you don't have it in here. Remember, prove me wrong with this. Praise God. Heavenly Father, this is my Bible. Your word written to me. All it says I have, I have. And all it says I can do, I will do. I believe now, right now, in the name of Jesus, I will receive revelation knowledge of your holy, written, living, uncompromised word. As this knowledge is revealed to me, I shall be made free, absolutely free in every area of my life that others may see Jesus in me. I believe it now, right now. Now, never, 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 never. Ever, 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 ever be the same again in Jesus' name. And Father, I thank you this morning as your word goes forth that you watch over that word to perform it. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Rise up big within me this morning. I have submitted myself to you, spirit, soul, body, so that people can learn of you and be taught of you as you lead us and guide us in all the truth. I thank you that the kingdom of God is at hand. The blind see, the lame walk, the deaf hear, and nobody leaves the same way they came. In Jesus' name, everybody said, Amen. so be it. Praise God. Thank you. Go ahead and be seated, please. This is number one. The title is, Put in the Super on Your Natural. Put in the super on your natural. You have got a natural. We need to get a super on it. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Say, I've already preached myself. Happy. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Glory to God. Hosea chapter 4, verse 6. Hosea. Hosea chapter 4, verse 6. My people, God's people are what? Destroyed for lack of what? Knowledge. This does not mean college education knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge. Notice it's available, but they turned it down. I will also reject you, that you shall be no priest to me, seeing you have forgotten the law of thy God. I will also forget your children. Yes. Bible in basic English, Hosea 4, 6. Have you got that? Oh, okay, you got the next one. Destruction has overtaken my people because they have no knowledge. Because you have given up knowledge, I will give you up, <laughs> so you'll be no priest to me. Because you have not kept in mind the law of your God, I will not keep your children in my memory. That was the Bible in basic English. This is Hosea 4, 6 from the New, New Living Testament. My people are being destroyed because they don't know me. Since you priests refuse to know me, I refuse to recognize you as my priests. Since you've forgotten the laws of God, I'll forget to bless your children. Ouch. Ouch. Amen. Aren't you glad Jesus is the healer? Yes. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Actually, what happens is too many times in the body of Christ, and all of us have done this at one time or another, to one degree or another, too many of us have, have actually missed the supernatural things of God. Because what we do is we look for the spectacular. And living in the supernatural is not living from spectacular to spectacular, even though sometimes it happens, you get to spectacular things happen. But living in the supernatural only requires that the Word of God works for you when you do it. Living in the supernatural, it means that you can take the super of God and apply it to your natural circumstances and get the God kind of results in those circumstances. To, to, to live a life getting results from God's Word and winning is living in the supernatural. You're a winner. That's how God sees you. You may as well find out that you're a winner. Amen. I hate to lose. Oh yeah, I hate to lose. Even when I play games with little kids. <laughs> I take every advantage I can. <laughs> now you shouldn't do that. You shut up. I'll do dead gum well what I want to do. I'm going to win. We got parents teaching their kids how to be good losers. Teach them how to be good sports. And great winners. Hallelujah. Give it your best shot. 
If you lost, get up and get after it again. Yes. Amen. You can't quit. Dear Jesus, you can't, you can't lose until you quit. I used to tell people if a person was in law enforcement, if a person was rather huge and uh, huger than me and had a reputation for being a lot huger than me, I would tell them things like, well, I said, you're going because that's just the way it is. You're going. He says, no, I'm not. I said, yes, you are. Yeah, you're going. He said, what if I don't? I said, well, I'm going to just wrap around your leg. You're going to have to drag me around until you get tired and then we'll go to jail. <laughs> Eventually, you'll get tired of doing this, you know. A person who is living in this supernatural is, is one who can say, now I live in the natural world, but I'm winning because of the super of God. Amen. So how can you tell if you're living in the supernatural? I'm glad you asked that. And not some, now listen, pay attention because you've got to have to learn to discern some things. Don't be caught up in the counterfeit goosey bump experiences where there's lots of shouting and dancing. And things that sometimes appear to be manifestations of God's power. Well, how can you tell? I'm glad you asked. Because I'm here to help you. <laughs> the answer is real simple. If you're living in the supernatural, it's test time. You are consistently getting results from the Word of God. You're living in the supernatural if you're I'm reminded of the, the comedian that you know, he did a thing, you're a redneck if. <laughs> you know, I mean, he was funny stuff, but it's not very politically correct, but it was funny. <laughs> but you're living in the supernatural if you're praying prayers and your prayers are being answered. You're living, in, and, and, and you're living in the supernatural if you're confessing the word, you can see what you say. You're living in the supernatural if you're laying hands on the sick and they get better. You're living in the supernatural if you're standing in faith for finances and money's coming into you. Don't let the spectacular mislead you into thinking that if it isn't spectacular, it's not supernatural. An experience is supernatural when the super of God is manifested in your life so the result is manifested in your life is God's results. Supernatural living is getting results from the Word of God and winning throughout all the tests and trials that may come your way. Let's, let's have some fun. And they all said, oh, no. <laughs> if you go to church and sing and shout and dance and go home and you're still sick and you're still in bondage and you're still broke and your marriage is a mess and your kids are out of control, you're not living in the supernatural. <laughs> no matter how wonderful it is when you gather together at church, and it should be, if you don't apply what you hear from the Word of God to your lives when you get home, you're not living supernaturally. But on the other side of the coin, you don't experience anything that is spectacular while you're at church, but when you get home, you apply the teaching that you heard from the Word, and you apply it to your circumstances and supernaturals, and you see God take care of stuff you are living in the supernatural. Yes. You're living in the supernatural life that God has intended for every believer. He's not a respecter of persons because you're getting results and living in victory through the Word of God. Now, don't think for one minute that without the spectacular, it's going to be boring. I got news for you. What could be born about living in the Word of God? And you, when you begin living supernaturally, this is the fun, I think it's the fun part. The way God wants us to live, the emotions and spectacular manifestations will start showing up. And when we assemble ourselves together to praise and worship God and share how good God is, the emotions will begin to rise and you're your whole attitude will be changing because you're getting results 
from what God has said in his word. And someone else in the house is learning and getting results from what God says. When everybody in the congregation is getting results from the word, when we come together at church, we're going to sing, we're going to shout, we're going to dance, we're going to run the aisles, praise God. I haven't seen anybody run the aisles for a while. It's about time. Amen. I'll tell you what, God gets to moving. You can't hardly contain yourself sometimes. And if God's moving on you and you feel like running the aisles, get yourself out in running form, baby. Get your Nikes on and go at it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Nike, that's an interesting term. You know, it's a big business, you know, Nikes. It's taken from the Greek word nikael. <gasps> yes, it is. And it means just do it. <laughs> that's what it means in the Greek. You look it up. I'm telling you, Ephesians, it talks about it. <laughs> This is what I believe this series of messages is going to do for you. We're going to learn to use how learn to use the weapons of God the way God has given us in His Word, and we're going to overcome the troubles in life. Don't ever think that you're on this planet and the devil's not going to bug you. This lady came up to a preacher many years ago and she says, "Brother, would you please pray for me? The devil leave you alone." He said, "Okay, I'll pray for you to die." Because that's the only time he's going to leave you alone. Amen. The thing is, he's going to leave you alone less and less because if you, he comes around every time you smack him upside the head with the Word of God, he'll quit coming around so much. I mean, I don't, that, it doesn't take rocket science to know when you walk up to someone and they smack you with something. It, you got to think about next time you walk up there. Do I really want to do this? Because I can go over here and get hugged. I don't want to get her slapped. That was the decision. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17, please, for our light affliction, our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Look at the New Living Testament. This is cool. For our present troubles are small and won't last very long. Isn't that good? Yet they produce for us a glory that vastly outweighs them, and it will last forever. Amen. So no matter what your problem is, if you start learning what God says about your problem and circumstance and start applying it to that, it's not going to last forever. Job only spent nine months in that mess. People talk about Job like he did it forever. No, it was about nine months. And he ended up with twice as much as he had when he started. So now it's getting quiet in here. So if you think you're living a life of Job, nine months, you're going to be totally free and have twice as much as you have now. Hallelujah. Okay, then. Now, just because you get born again doesn't mean that you're never going to have any problems. Life is just a bowl of cherries, and once in a while, it's the pits. In the cherries. The difference is now you can learn how to take authority over those tests and trials and learn to walk in victory. Because you see, that's what's going to win the world. You walking in victory is going to win the world. Not you telling them how good God is, but you showing them how good God is. John 16, 33, Jesus said this, as long as we're in the world, we're going to have problems. These things I have spoken to you that in me, you might have peace. In him, you might have what? In the world you shall have, but be a good cheer. I've overcome the world. <laughs> Notice in the world you're going to have problems, but in him, in Jesus, you'll have peace. What's peace? Peace is that security in the middle of a test or trial or turmoil or trouble or problem. And where does that peace come from? Jesus said it comes from the words that he's spoken to us. In me, you'll have peace. Jesus is the Word. The world will give you troubles, but the Word will bring you peace. You can, you can be peaceful in the middle of a tornado. You can. Amen. Now, even though we live in the world where the trouble are, Jesus said we can stay secure by staying in this world. So, in the, we're in the world physically, 
but we're not of the world system. We're not supposed to be anyway. You've been delivered from that. So quit running back to it. So we need to function in the system of the Word of God, in the system of the kingdom of God, in the system of ambassadors for Christ. How did Jesus overcome the world system? He used the Word of God. This is amazing to me. When, we miss it. When he was in, in, in being tempted by the devil, the devil himself, the, the big mucko, the big guy, the leader, the boss, right, was tempting Jesus. And Jesus took what Moses wrote and beat the devil. Jesus, the only begotten, first begotten Son of God, beat the devil with something that man wrote. Inspired by the Holy Ghost, but man wrote it and Jesus used it because it was inspired by the Holy Ghost and he took what Moses wrote and beat the devil, spirit, soul, and body. Right. Hallelujah. So, I do have some good news that if Jesus overcame problems, that means then, because he's our example, we can do it too. <laughs> now, just because problems come to you doesn't mean they have to overcome you. So, when tests, trials, temptations, problems come, what you need to do is give them a test, trial, tribulation, or a problem. Give trouble to your troubles. I like that. Give problems to your problems. The enemy comes in one way, go, oh, by the way, the Word says now he's got a problem. Learning how to live above these things, it just doesn't happen. I wish it did, but it doesn't. And it doesn't happen because I'm just a good guy. That shoots that down. So, it happens because you do what God says. And not just during crisis. This stuff just kind of comes out, doesn't it? Uh, <laughs> praise God. And so, once you find out who you are in Christ, you begin to study the Word, practice the Word, you get it rooted and grounded in yourself by love, you're going to start getting results and you're going to begin to bear the God kind of fruit in your life. You're going to succeed and not fail. You're going to overcome, not underachieve. You're going to be a winner, not a loser. And you'll be given problems to your problems. You can reach a place in him of living in peace and victory every day of your life. When you wake up in the morning, hell should tremble. Amen. And the only rest they should get is when you go night-night. And if God wakes you up in the middle of the night, hell's going to tremble again. Amen. Let's look at the book of Hebrews and it, it describes who we are and what position we have once you get born again. See, people get, they don't understand some things. My people destroy it for lack of knowledge. You know, well, I joined the church or I got born again. Praise God for that. Or I got water baptized. Praise God for that. But you need to know more than those things. You need to know really what has happened to you. Hebrews chapter 1, verses 10 through 14. And thou, Lord, in the beginning has laid the foundation of the earth and the heavens are the works of thine hands. They shall perish, but thou remainest. And they shall all wax old as doth a garment, and as a vesture shalt thou fold them up, and they shall be changed. But thou art the same, and thy years shall not fail. Verse 13, but to which of the angels said he at any time, sit on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool? Verse 14, are not they all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? Wow. Chapter 2, verses 1 through 6, Hebrews. Therefore, you find out what it's there for, because it is. We ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, 
Verse 3, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him? God also bearing them witness, both with signs and wonders, with diverse miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost, according to his own will. For unto the angels has he not put in subjection the world to come, whereof we speak. But one in a certain place testified, saying, What is man that thou art mindful of him? Or the son of man that thou visitest him? Now, in these two sections of Hebrews that we just read, God is establishing a divine rank and order. He establishes it among himself, men, and angels. He makes it very clear. Here's the order. God's the head. But notice, after God, man is next. Then the angels. In Hebrews 2 6, see, man ranks right under God. Boy, that went over real big. That's what it says, folks. We just read it. Ephesians 2 6, he says that we are seated together with him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. But let's look at the ministry of angels back to Hebrews 1 14. They have been sent forth, these angels have been sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation. I'm going to break this down because it's going to help you get some understanding of who you are. So if God sent the angels forth, and he did, then they're anointed to do the job because anytime God sends someone out, he anoints them to do the job. Right? So he, they're anointed to do the job he sent them to do. Angels have a mission. They have certain job to do. And we just read in the word there that the specific purpose on, of angels on planet earth is to minister or serve, not just serve in the sense of, let me back up. They're, they're called to minister to serve, not to minister to somebody as such, but to minister for them. There is a difference. Too many of us are running around, give me, give me, give me, my name is Jimmy. Well, the angels have been sent forth to minister for those who are what? Heirs of what? Salvation. Salvation. Now, who are heirs? Heirs are people who who are in a position to inherit something. Something's been left for them. Something uh, is available. Something has been provided for them. And, and, and now they have an opportunity to receive or get a hold of whatever that inheritance was. So what's been left for the heirs? What's their inheritance? What is it? Salvation. Salvation. Now watch this. Here's where we get a little bit Unfortunately, we get a little religious here. We need to look at the word salvation because sometimes it gets confused with born again. And even though the terms are synonymous and, and, and they're related ideas, but they don't mean exactly the same thing. Born again, that's what happens when you uh, to your spirit after you, you repent and, and receive Jesus and confess him with your mouth and believe that God had raised him from the dead, you become born again. To be born again means you mean move from darkness to life where you went from point A to point B. You went from here to there based on a decision that you made. Salvation is what is available to you once you get born again. Salvation is not something that's just stored up in heaven for you in the sweet by and by. We shall meet on that beautiful shore. What if a tsunami comes and knocks you down? Anyway, <laughs> salvation is not something you have to leave the earth in the rapture to get. Salvation is what you have available to you 
right here and now after you get born again. For you Greek scholars, let's look at the Greek word for salvation. Now I've heard two ways to pronounce this, so I'm going to do them both, and whichever one comes out easiest, that's the one I'm going to end up on. One of them is soteria, which I think is correct from one of most of the places I read. Uh, Brother Brent can help me with this. And the other is soteria. Soteria is easier to say. <laughs> but don't make a difference. It's still the Greek word. Okay? Everyone with me? All right. That word means, watch this, healing, safety, deliverance, protection, soundness, and even includes this ministry of the angels. Therefore, God is saying that the angels have been sent to serve the heirs of Soteria, and they have the responsibility of serving you if you're a born-again person. Angels are to serve you in the areas of healing, deliverance, safety, protection, soundness, and they're also able to minister to you in other areas where you have a need. I was reading after this person, they used an analogy that I, I thought was very good, and I'm going to use it because there's nothing new. You know, sometimes, you know, the, I mean, this, this preacher was asked, asked to teach at a Bible school, and he said to the person who asked him, he said, the only thing I know is what you said. He said, I just preach what you preach. He says, I just got your tapes and cassettes and listened to them, and I just preach it almost word for word. He said, that's what I do. He said, I preach what you preach. He said, well, it's all the Word of God, right? Right. He said, well, nobody's got anything new. Plus, you're not preaching it to me. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> they were, I, I think this is funny. They were at a meeting or something. You know, like, like you go to Bible school. You're going to preach what someone else told you. And then you get your stuff and put your stuff on it, you know. And uh, I, I taught one time several years ago on a on a particular series, and I just listened to it from a, another preacher, and I taught the series, and, and this person came up to me and he said, I just listened to that series by so-and-so. I said, yeah. And you know, you preach the same thing, kinda, but yet it was different. So anyway, don't, you know, if it's the Word of God, just let her go. Amen. But I thought this was very good. Uh, getting born again and then becoming an heir of salvation is like joining a fitness club. We just, I don't know if you ever, you know, exercise fascinates me. I can watch it for hours. In fact, I saw a person jogging the other day, almost wore me out. I thought, <laughs> The Bible does say bodily exercise profits, and the Greek says a little bit for a little while. So, so you need to do that. Yeah. But maybe you, you, you've looked at your bod, you know. You woke up one morning and said, my God, there's three of us. I don't want to have one head. So I need to do something about it. So what do you do? You go back to bed and order some pizza. <laughs> Until you make a decision, you're going to do something. Then what do you do? You look around and you get maybe the internet or something like that. And what do you do? You go look through fitness clubs. And so you make this decision. You're going to order to, to, to join this club. And, and you go through the procedure. You know, you fill out the paperwork. You know, I weigh 7,000 pounds. And I want to get down to 24 and, you know, whatever it is. And, and after you do all the paperwork and everything, you know, and pay your dues, You are entitled to use the club's facilities and all the benefits of being members of the club. As long as you keep your payments up. So if you make a decision then to get in physical shape, well, round is a shape, I know. If, if you get... <laughs> <laughs> to get, 
I just, when I sat, when I sat down this morning, I thought, uh-oh, it's one of those days for me up here. I can tell. So anyway, and, <laughs> I tickled myself. Okay. If you make a decision to join a, a club and, 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 and you have available to you all those wonderful machines. And let me preface this with a remark. I have worked out on a few of those machines. And whoever invented the Stairmaster needs to be shot. <laughs> that thing is the most, amen, yeah. That thing is the most, that, that was invented by somebody that hates people. <laughs> I'm talking about the thing that's got the thing here, the thing here, and then two steps, and you go, like this. That thing hurts. And they don't even have it turned up. And then they have a thing on it to crank, and you go, oh, this is pretty. And I just ripped out my brand new jogging suit. <laughs> oh, man, I'm telling you, terrible stuff. We had a, a treadmill years ago. Remember I said, I, I hate to lose. And we had this treadmill in my house. My, my girls were still, still home. And, and uh, they said, Dad, because we were all working on it. They said, Dad, you can't run that at full speed. Oh. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Yes, I can. So I got on the treadmill and they kept kicking it up and kicking it up and kicking it up and this thing started whizzing, right? <laughs> and um, I can tell you this without any fear of contradiction, they kicked it up fast enough that the physics involved was me hitting the treadmill and going that way <laughs> and running into the couch and the chair and everything else. But I didn't give up. So you, you can go and use everything that's available. You can, you can work out on the, the circuit machines, you know, they have little sections you go to. And you swim in the pool, you can play handball, racquetball, join an aerobics class. That's my idea of aerobics. <laughs> Try it. Two, one, two, one, two. Oh. Time for a milkshake. In other words, you can go to the club and use what's ever available to you. It's available to you. You bought a membership. It's available. The same thing is true when you join Club Soteria. As a member of the Club Soteria, you can have made available to you the Stairmaster of Healing. The bench press of protection, the barbell of deliverance, treadmill of safety. <laughs> if you don't get stupid. And the leg press of soundness. All of those of our benefits are available to you when you join the club. How did you join? I'm glad you asked that. You made a decision to move from the position of slothfulness to the position of discipline and fitness. When you get born again, you join Club Soteria and you now have everything available to you that's in the club. Deliverance is available to you in the club. Safety is available to you in the club. Deliverance is available to you in the club. Healing is available to you in the club. Protection is available to you. All of the exceeding great and precious promises are made available to you in Club Soteria. Getting born again is a requirement for membership. But the price for membership has been paid in full. 
As soon as you become a member, you've got a right to use everything that is in the club, praise God, and your membership is for life. Prepaid by somebody else for life. So I have a right to benefit from everything salvation has to offer. And one of those things is, of course, the ministry of angels. To continue in this fitness club analogy, let me just share this with you. The angels have been sent to members of Club Soteria as your personal trainer. Think about it. Angels have been employed at the club to assist you with those benefits of membership which have been made available to you. Are not they ministers sent forth to minister for those who shall be heirs of Soteria? So therefore you become heirs of salvation of Soteria and the ministry of angels and all those other benefits of salvation available to you. The word says, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1 through 3, Therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, verse 3, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him? How shall we escape our problems if we neglect Club Soteria? How shall we become overcomers if we don't go and exercise at Club Soteria? Your lifetime membership has been paid in full. Why are you sitting home eating pizza? As a born again child of God, you have a lifetime membership paid in full in Club Soteria. Hallelujah. And I'm out of time. And we're You know, it amazes me. A bunch of crazy people here. I mean that in a good way. You know what I'm saying, you know. But people go to church today, they expect, well, a 12 and a half minute sermon three minutes in their offering, three songs, go home, you know, in and out in 30 minutes, and they're fine. This bunch, I hold it under an hour, and you're about ready to throw something at me. <laughs> you know what? But that shows you, you are a, a lifetime member in Club Soteria, and that you want all the benefits of the club, praise God. And I'm telling you, praise God, we're going to hook it up again here next week and we're going to look at those benefits and how to get them and how to do some exercise. <laughs> and let me just share this in closing. If God wanted you to bend over and touch your toes, he would have put them on your knees. <laughs> That's a joke, folks. I... Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, how many members do we have where your lifetime membership is paid for in the club? Amen. Well, let's stand up and thank God for your membership. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Glory to God. Father, we bless you and thank you so much for being so gracious and so merciful to us. I give you praise, Father God, that we have been made Heirs of God, joint heirs with Jesus. Thank you, Lord. As we learn more and more about what belongs to us and how to receive that inheritance, that we're going to, to learn so that people can see Jesus in us, that we are victorious, that we are overcomers, that we can do all things through Christ that you have not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. 
and we refuse to bow our knee to the world system. We bow our knee to Jesus, the King of kings and Lord of lords, and declare that Satan is under our feet, and we will not put up with it anymore. Hallelujah. So you listen up, devil, in Jesus' name, you get your hands off my stuff. In the name of Jesus, I'm going to stomp you and kick you and beat on you for the rest of my days on this planet. Whether you like it or not, whether you want me to or not, I'm going to do it because you're under my feet. God said so, and I'm exercising my right as members of the club. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Woo! Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. I'll tell you what, I'm in such good shape I can comb my own hair and kiss my biceps. <laughs> Amen. And I'll tell you, you know, I, even, even when I, I used to be in, a, in a, you know, a few years ago, I was in, you know, a better shape physically than I am now, of course, but not, not quite, not a lot more, but some more. And, and I discovered something, you know, these, these, these male models that they have, you know, always show up, you know, they got this six pack. I'm telling you, you could hit me in the tummy with a log and I'd just sit there and grin at you, but you couldn't tell because I didn't have a six pack. And then I got stupid, <laughs> and my six-pack turned into a kegger. <laughs> and, but I've been delivered. <laughs> Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to have fun with this. At least I am. I, you might as well just get in on it. Amen. Having more fun than a human being ought to be allowed to have. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm down off of that now. That means I'm moving around. I'm, I'm just, I love, you know, body language is just amazing to me. I'm not moved by body language. Otherwise, I never preach again, ever. Amen. But sometimes, you know, uh, body language, and, I, and I'll just do this like I'm walking. I'm just walking, and there's, there's a few of you that get this process that says, <laughs> see, you don't say anything, but you are. You go, and then as I get closer, you go, and then you do one of these. I know what the Bible says and it's a scripture I'm standing on and it says the secrets of your heart you'll love this the secrets of your heart will be made manifest and you'll know that he's of God I've been believing God for that ever since I got into ministry why? because I want to help you I don't want to pick on you I want to help you and sometimes, you know, depending on where you are in the flesh or the spirit, my picking on you, trying to help you, is perceived as picking on you rather than helping you. Amen. You get to know the, the, the Jesus of the Bible, and sometimes like, woo, he called the religious leaders a bunch of snakes. And they heard him. Hi, pumpkin. Praise the Lord. You know how precious you are. You're just so precious. What's that? Is that your toy? It's a precious honey. Yeah. Look at that. That's a nice toy. Yes. And you're precious too. Yes, you are. You're a precious baby. You're a precious baby. Don't you grit at me. 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 Go to joke. Yeah. You and I relate, don't we? It's alive in God, so am I. Amen. 
Praise the Lord. In fact, the matter is, the Spirit's alive. You'd be amazed what they've heard. Yes. See, they don't sit there and, well, I don't know if I agree with that or not. I just, they go, oh, that's the word. One night I was teaching, this grandmother brought her little, I think about six-year-old to church. And, and uh, the Lord had moved on me, and I was in one of my humorous anointings. And uh, the grandmother was just, <laughs> how dareth him do things like that in church? My God. You always know it's religious when they put a spell God, G-O-T, with emphasis on the T. And, 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 and. Her six-year-old was standing, sitting next to her, and she looked over at him, and his eyes were just focused on me. I'm not saying this all bragging on me, I'm telling you, because he was learning from the Spirit of God. God will use you in the most amazing situations and circumstances where children and people can learn of you, even though you think, that's the dumbest thing. Why in the world did I ever... You ever done? Now, why in the world do I say that? Maybe God told you to say that, and that was the switch that made that person start thinking about where they are. Don't sell yourself short. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Devil doesn't run you and you see unless you let him. And don't bow your knee to that frazzling thing. Take the word of God, just like Jesus did. And defeat the devil and let him know where his place is. Amen. Right there. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. If you like hands laid on you this morning, come on up here. I don't know if it is it up here or down here. What I don't know what that is exactly. Come on over here with me. How's that? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, everybody's supposed to do the work of an evangelist. Did you know that? Well, did anybody know that? Oh, I'm glad. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Where exactly is the actual problem? Number five disc. Okay, it, it's, it's in the neck though, right? The number five disc. Did you know... I thought this was amazing. This is this nonsense. I know a lot of nonsensical information is absolutely useless, except this. Did you know that a human and a giraffe have the same number of discs in their Yeah, they're the same. Yeah. Yeah, and they're just spread apart a lot. See, don't tell me you don't learn something coming here. Hang on to her. Jesus, Jesus, no, Jesus, 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 oh my Lord Jesus. Mm. law enforcement. Get your hands up. There you go. Praise the Lord. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 
Yes, the Spirit of Grace says you're learning, learning, learning that it's more than education, it's revelation. And you're learning more and more how your intellectual education of stuff is put aside and replaced by the revelation of the Word of God. Therefore, it's truth, and the truth that you know makes you free. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Everything, yes. Oh. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Jesus. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Ho, ho, ho. Oh, yeah, you just need the full shot. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. From the top of her head to the soles of her feet, I declare she's redeemed from the curse of the law. In Jesus' name, praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory to the singer, Roba Dalla Dalsova. Kim Hala Sikidi. Just for you, somebody else. All righty then. Blessed be God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Get it. Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. It washes white as snow. Sing it again unto him. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Wash us white as snow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Blessed, blessed, blessed be the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise God. Yes, sir. Ah, just listen up. <laughs> oh, yes. Listen. Just because you're going to church once in a while, and just because you show up once in a while, there is a day coming soon, says the Spirit of Grace that you need to recognize, realize, and understand that there's more to this than what you see. But as long as you continue to think in the negative sense and put people ahead of the Lord Jesus Christ, the day is coming where there's going to be a reckoning for you and you need to obey the Spirit of God. Wow. Praise God. Whew. Praise the Lord. Well, bless God, I hope he wasn't talking about you. Well, you better check then if you hope. <laughs> Amen. This is what I know about that. He wasn't talking about me. See, that's what I know. You have to figure that out for you. But me, I have to look for me. Okay? You never miss it? Well, once I did, but I repented, so it doesn't count anymore, so no. See? That's Bible. When you mess up, you repent about it. It's as though it never happened. You can go on like it never happened. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right, we're going to let you minister to the Lord you're giving this morning.